Hey everyone, welcome back to the Mark Loeffler Experience. Uh, we got a great show for you today. We got my good friend Omar Khan. Uh, he's the one who taught me how to trade. Uh, he taught me a lot about real estate investing, a lot about business. And he runs the Theta Trading Academy now, and he's doing a whole bunch of other stuff he's going to tell us about today. And, you know, we're just, again, like all these, we're just going to connect. We're going to see where it goes, where, what happens from it. And by the way, if you guys have, if you hear any investments during this show, please do not take our word that these are good investments. These are just what we're investing in. Obviously, do all, all do your own due diligence. And what, before you do your due diligence, don't forget to smash the like button for the YouTube algorithm and subscribe and turn on that notification bell. Guys, we're almost up to 500 subscribers. This is awesome. And remember, if by the end of July we get to 1,000, I promised Alex Pal that I would do Russian dancing on the YouTube channel. Woo. So make it happen, guys. Get, get us to 1,000 by the end of July, and you're going to get to see Mark do Kazakh dancing on the on the YouTube channel, okay? Well, that's gonna be rough, so, Mark. Oh, 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 no, it's easy, bud. When when you're when you're in good shape like I am, it's easy. Right, right, right. So, Omar, help me get to a thousand. Absolutely, we'll do, man. Uh, all right, all right. Well, so, I mean, Omar's a good friend of mine. I've known I've known you for what about eight years now? Yeah, what eight years? Yeah. Now? Um, right. Yeah, we met at Rain Real Estate Investment Network. They're still going. Go check them out. I know there's a lot of you guys who are watching probably still in Rain. And Omar was telling me about options trading for since we met, basically. And it probably took two years or so before. And it probably took two years or so before I was like, okay, show me. Right? Like, show me what you're talking about. And you showed me, and then I'm like, okay, well, how do I get started? And you're like, oh, read these two books, which we've talked about in the channel before. You can go back to talk about the options trading, but they're Lee Lowell, uh, Get Rich with Options, and Derek Foster, Money for Nothing, and Your Stocks for Free, right? Mm -hmm. And, you know, and then I got into doing options trading six years ago, and, I mean, minimum my return per year has been about 15%, and that was in a year when – like the market, that, that's when that market, we got big, hit big in, uh, in December there, right? Uh, I mean, my top years have been 60, 70%. So I'm basically averaging around 30, 35% return. Um, now, obviously, I think I'm smarter today than I was six years ago at doing this. Yet, I know you run a course, and I think this would have been incredibly helpful for me at the beginning if you were running that course. Um, you know, I kind of got my trading system down. I kind of don't like to deviate from what I do now because I find it when I deviate, that's when I lose money. Absolutely. So, I mean, I know you've been running this course since um, September. I mean, just, yeah, talks. Yeah, yeah. So thanks, Mark. I appreciate it. Yeah, Mark, I've, I've been, uh, we've been friends for eight years. I've, uh, I, I used to see Mark at Rain. And the thing with Rain is it was all real estate guys, right? So you'd go there and, you'd, and, I, and I had to learn real estate. I came from the stock world. I learned real estate. So I'd see Mark and others there. And, and, and every time I was at Rain or, or real estate events, they'd all, you know, the, the crowd would always bash uh, the stock market. You know, you'd, you'd have a constant bashing. Oh, you don't want to invest your money in the stock market. And that would be a constant theme at, at, at not just Rain, but at, at, you know, at many real estate meetings. Uh, and I'm not talking about the presenters. I'm just talking about the audience. They would just have a negative uh, opinion of the stock market. So I would tell people, I'm like, hey, no, you can actually do really well with the stock market. It's just a matter of knowledge. And so what happened over the years is uh, I taught friends and family how to trade over the years. Taught about 50 to 100 people over the years uh, just because I, 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 I believe it or not. I loved it. Uh, well, and you kind of did it. You kind of did it by osmosis, right? And, 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 and some one-on-one -on -one sessions and that type of thing. But it was mainly by osmosis. Yeah. Like, hey, th this is what I'm doing. You know, follow along until you get your groove and then you'll figure some shit out, right? Yeah, that's exactly what it was. So exactly yeah. what it was. So we, 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 we kind of taught people how to trade. And it doesn't take a lot of time. You know, you shouldn't take you more than 30, 40 minutes a day. Uh, it can be quite profitable. Your downside is very limited in terms of just ownership of high-quality stocks. So what we found was that over the years that people really weren't paying attention to the rules. As much as I'd stress the rules, people wouldn't pay attention to the rules. They'd think they're smart in the market. And that caused problems. So about a year ago, my best friend, Matthew Todman, and myself, we started a company called Theta Trading right up here. 
I know I forgot my hat. I was going to wear the hat for this and I forgot. That's okay. I got mine on. So yeah, we started Theta Trading about, uh, about nine months ago. We thought about the concept about a year ago. And the reason we thought about it is because, you know, the way we taught you, Mark, and, and, and there was other people, you know, you'd teach and people would be like, oh my God, I didn't know you could do this. This is phenomenal, right? That was the, that's the general reaction when, when people finally figured out. So there was so many people asking us, hey, can you help me? Can you help me? And it, and it started consuming a large amount of our time. So we thought, yeah, you know what? Uh, yeah, and it was. And then we uh, we decided, okay, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna partner up with someone. We partnered up with uh, a marketing company, uh, and we threw our first course. It went really really well. Our uh, feedback was phenomenal. People loved it. Uh, and then there was data trading was born. Uh, in about nine months, we've taught about six hundred and fifty students uh, how to trade, how to manage their own money, and how to be their own investor. And that's been the most fulfilling thing I've done professionally. In my life, I, I truly get to wake up every day doing something I love doing. And I can't ask for more than that. Yeah. And you have another course coming up June 26th, 27th, is it? Yeah. The weekend of June 27th, I believe it's 27th and 28th. Or, oh, yeah, yeah, 27th, 28th. Yeah. So we have a, another course coming up. In the course, basically, we teach people uh, who have no background whatsoever about the stock market. By the, you know, We teach them two full days, nine and a half hours each day. By the end of the second day, they know how to trade. They understand what we're talking about. You know, it, it's like anything else in life. People always talk about, hey, I want to develop multiple income streams. Great. Mm -hmm. What do you got to do to develop multiple income streams? You got to have the knowledge. You got to put in the time, the effort. It just doesn't fall in your lap like that. So we designed this course. I've been trading for 21 years. Uh, and in those 21 years, I made a lot of mistakes initially. I didn't, I had to teach myself. No one really taught me how to do it. So I, I, I learned you know, the hard way, which was <laughs> through trial and error, yep. you know, in your, in your red books, like Derek Foster's book and Lee Lowell's book. And those were great. And they really helped along, but we formulated our own style, uh, which is very similar to what, what, you know, what they preach. And the course now is exactly what I would have loved to have had when I first started trading 21 years ago. That mm -hmm. is the sole purpose of the, of the design of the course so that people don't have to go through the trials and tribulations and make all the mistakes that we made when we first started because those mistakes are costly. It costs a lot of money to make mistakes like that. Well, I mean, it comes, well, so there's two things you said that I want to point out there. Um, number one, you said multiple streams of income. It's funny, I was watching a YouTube channel from Graham Stephan and he said that in the coronavirus that most millionaires or people who are wealthy haven't really seen a significant drop in income because they have multiple, they have seven or more streams of income and I mean, I would say that's true. I mean, of myself, I mean, I've had some streams drop off. I have had some streams just go through the roof um, uh, because of it. And I mean, this is just another stream of income for me. I mean, I don't think this is, a, no offense, but not, it's not, you shouldn't put 100% of your money into this, right? Oh, I, I agree. There's, there's no, yeah, there's I, no. I, I, I know I'm not offending you. I know you agree with me, right? Yeah. So, I mean, this is one, one thing you, that should be part of a bigger portfolio for sure. Um, so that's, that's number one. And number two is, I mean, I've been th thinking about this, this is probably going to be a video. Actually, this, that video is probably going to come out before this one. Um, what advice would you give your 20 year old self? Right. That's and a, that'd, be, it, that'd, be, that'd be a great it, video, Mark. Well, and then that's exactly what you're saying is you're running this courses because this is the advice that you'd give your 20 year old self. hundred percent. Yeah exactly what I would do. We would give this, this is, this, if I could go back in time and talk to my 20 year old self, I'd like, Hey, do this, learn this. Oh, and man. it would have made, it would have made a huge difference in my life. Massive difference. Now, luckily I've done well as you know, regardless, but I could have done so much better. And the only differentiation between where I am and where I could have been was just a lack of knowledge. And that's yeah. why we created the Trader trading code to bridge that lack of knowledge. And like you were saying too, also, there's no such thing as there's no perfect investment in this world, whether that be real estate or whether that be a private, you know, private equity or whether that be the stock market, there's no perfect investment. You need multiple investments, right? This yep. is one investment you have, you know, you and I, we all have, we, we have multiple investments. You have, I have, and there's no perfect investment. One can go really bad at one time and the other one might flourish and, and vice versa. So you get those ebbs and flows, but you want to have different asset categories because yep. You know, the last one, I don't know, like 20 years, at least in Canada, the real estate market's done great. But that doesn't mean it's going to do great the next 10 years or five years. You know, we think it probably is, but it doesn't mean that that's the case, right? So you want to be able to rely on other 
uh, asset categories and understand the other asset categories so that when you know rougher, leaner times come that you can take advantage of that and benefit from that. 100%. Yeah. So, yeah, so I was gonna say, uh, you know, like I said, there's no, there's no perfect investment. So I wanted to describe to you guys a bit about what the strategy is, Mark, if you wouldn't mind. So Yeah, I mean, for sure. Yeah, I'll enlighten you guys. So, you know, the reason, you know, someone, uh, uh, you know, bright, intelligent, uh, successful guy like Mark has jumped all over this is because it logically makes sense. Uh, so the concept is pretty simple. Uh, we have about uh, 10 to 12 stocks that we like to buy. And you've heard of every one of them. I'll, and don't take this as stock advice, but here's, you know, the vast majority of them, you know. I've already done the disclaimer, so you can just say whatever. <laughs> <laughs> right. So you got your Bank of America, you got TD, Enbridge, CN Rail, Visa, Nike, um, Facebook, Apple, Apple uh, yeah. Coca-Cola, AT&T. There's, there's a couple more, but I, that, those are the names. Now, you've heard of every single one of these companies, most likely, okay? So what we do is we agree to buy these stocks at a discount, okay? So let's say, for example, Microsoft's trading for $175, okay? And we'll go in there and we'll say, you know what? We love Microsoft at 175, but we definitely like it more at 160. And as long as we agree to buy it for 160 for a certain period of time, we get paid to do that. So can you imagine you're getting paid just for agreeing to buy a stock that you love at a discount? So that's why it's a no brainer uh, in terms of in terms of how the, the, the actual uh, theory works. It's a great theory. So, I mean, it's funny. I mean, I was just talking to my accountant the other day and he's going through the sock sheet, the whatever they give you the t five, whatever thing. And he's like, you have no cost basis on these. And I'm like, I'm, and I'm like, we're trying to explain, well, no, they just gave me money for nothing. Right. Right. And there, he's like, well, I don't understand. Right. I'm like, just, just at the end of the day, I was like, there's a zero cost base. Yeah. There's a zero. I cost mean, base if you don't want to go read this and do this, then it's a zero cost base. So yeah. Yeah. If you want to let those options expire so they're worthless. Yeah. The cost base is zero. Yeah, absolutely. So, uh, it's an interesting how it works. So for example, like I was saying, if you, if you, if you, if Microsoft's trading at 175, and we agree to buy it for 160. Well, let's say somebody will pay us three or four dollars a share to do that. Yep. Now, if it goes to 160, we'll have to buy it for 160 or whatever current market price it's at. But if it stays above 160, we keep that three or four dollars. And that three or four dollars, by the way, I'm just making that number up right now. It, it changes, it changes uh, often based on lots of different variables. But the point is, you get paid. Essentially, what Mark was saying, you get money for free just for agreeing to buy stocks you would want to buy anyways. It's mm -hmm. literally money for nothing. Like, your only obligation is to buy something that you would have bought anyways. And it creates an additional income source for yourself. And if things go really bad and you haven't used your margin, uh, meaning borrowed funds, your worst case scenario is going to be you know, limited to the fact that you own a high quality stock like Microsoft at a discount. Now, if you ask yourself, can you live with that level of risk? And I think the vast majority of people will be asked themselves truly, they can live with that level of risk. The level of risk we do not want to live with, and I don't think anybody wants to, is you don't want to lose your money, your actual capital. That's the crappy place to be in. And mm -hmm. how do you avoid that? You, you avoid that by staying to the high, high quality stocks and you know, not getting caught up in what your neighbor said about some, you know, oh, hey, uh, this cannabis stock is going to the moon and back or some weird company. That's what gets you in trouble because you have no business owning it because you don't know anything about it. So we stick to these really high quality stocks. The majority of the stocks we actually uh, agree to buy and get paid for, they actually pay a dividend as well. So if you have to wind up owning the stock for a while, you get paid a profit, well, your dividend, which is your portion of the after-tax profits that they pay out to shareholders, and you get paid that once a quarter. So it gives you a nice cash flow stream, even if, even if things don't go your way and the stock goes down temporarily. Now, the cool thing with these stocks is the vast majority of them, even in the worst of economic times, recover in 12 to 18 months. So during the 2008, 2009 recession, these stocks went down, sure, but they recovered pretty quickly. And that is a really cool part of the strategy. It allows you to make money, even if things don't go the right way. And if things do go the right way, you also make money. So it's a really forgiving strategy. Yeah. Well, I mean, just for instance, like during this whole COVID thing, like I was selling Enbridge puts for like 36, $34 and I got some and right. 
I, I haven't sold calls. Well, I've sold calls now at forty-six dollars, but I mean, I think it's closed today over forty-four dollars. Right. So I've, coll I've collected a dividend at now my my dividend percentage is like ten percent. I've right. co I, I've collected like a two percent uh, premium on a call, plus my put money, like. Plus ten dollars in appreciation. Plus ten dollars in appreciation. Yeah, yeah. So it's a great and strategy for for owning a stock that delivers your natural gas. Yeah, there's no getting around those guys. The, I mean, I, if I don't pay them, I don't have heat, right? So exactly the same with all of us. That's why you want to yeah. stick to those high quality stocks because you want to stick to stocks uh, or companies that you need even during the best times of worst of times. Like a, like as bad as coronavirus has been, you know, you look at Something like, have you cut your internet provider? No, probably not. We, we, we all, still there. everybody upgraded. Everybody got more. Everyone got more, right? So, yeah. so, so, so certain companies benefit from that. Uh, a company like, uh, you know, Microsoft has benefited tremendously from, an, you know, the, the technology companies are going to come out of this in a more, more favorable position. If you look at Facebook, how many more users are using Facebook or WhatsApp on a daily oh, yeah. basis? The, eye, the eyeballs on it are huge. I mean, their, their daily right. user numbers went up massive. I mean, their advertising revenue went down because some of their companies went, are like, hey, we're not open. We're not going to advertise anymore. Yet that's all going to come back. That's all going to come back. Exactly. So that's, what, and, that's the whole philosophy. And I know that I was listening to your Instagram post uh, from earlier today. I mean, talking about the current state of the market, I mean, why don't you, uh, I mean, we're going to rip that off. So why don't you just tell me what you said? Yeah, absolutely. So it, it, a lot of people are probably wondering, well, as we sit here on the uh, 4th of, 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 of June, uh, why is the stock market doing so well when the economy is doing so poorly? And the economy is, it's, it's an absolute, it's in the toilet. You have uh, millions and millions of unemployed people. Uh, the stock market yet can, has, has done fairly well. So the stock market bottomed around March 23rd and has recovered considerably since then. Now almost the fully. Is, almost fully, right. And the NASDAQ is almost fully. The S&P is still about 8% away. Yeah. And then the Dow is about 11% away. But yeah, it's almost fully recovered. The question is why? Well, the reason is simple. The stock market is a forward-looking mechanism. So it looks forward six to 12 months. In six to 12 months, it expects the economy to be in far better shape than it is currently. And it expects that the unemployment rate will start to decline substantially going forward. So the economy will start to improve, but the stock market prices this stuff in six to 12 months in advance. Now that's very different from real estate, which is a lagging indicator, right? Real estate will lag the economy. So if the economy is really poorly, real estate will follow a few months later as, as people can't get loans anymore, as, as jobless claims go up. So it's a very different mechanism. Uh, the real estate market also is, you know, like I said, it's a lagging indicator. The stock market is a forward looking mechanism. Another thing that's really, really helped uh, the stock market out is the tremendous amount of, of, of free stimulus. money from the Fed. <laughs> yeah, right. The Fed, don't, don't fight the Fed pump. Right. Don't fight the Fed pump. Exactly. Right. So yeah. all the stimulus that's been pumped into the markets to prop the markets in, to inject liquidity in interest rates. So not only monetary policy, but monetary stimulus, but also fiscal stimulus, meaning interest rates have also been lowered, right? So the cost yeah. of borrowing is lower. And you guys could probably expect for those of you who are real estate investors out there, you could probably expect interest rates to be low for a long, long time. And here's why. A couple of years for sure. Oh, I think even longer than that. You think about it logically, the, the governments around the world have borrowed a ton of money, you know, especially mm -hmm. the states. That's true. Yep. Right. They have to service this debt. Yep. Right. And we're servicing a debt, I can assure you, you don't want high interest rates. So they're going to make sure the interest rate is as low as possible so they can service this debt and continue to pay it and keep their cost of borrowing lower. Like I believe in Canada, it was, uh, I think we've spent $300 billion uh, during COVID. That's a and, lot of money. Considering well, I and the, the U.S. is what, eight, 8 trillion now or something? Yeah, which, well, that's counting their, their buyback programs. Yeah, but yeah, 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 it's massive, right? So these two things... Uh, this, both the stimulus and the fact that the stock market's a forward-looking mechanism has really bridged the gap between where the economy is today and where the stock market is, is, is positioned today. The stock market, as Mark was saying, is almost at an all-time high, you know, but the economy is still in the gutter. Remember, the stock market and the economy are not the same thing. It's a forward-looking mechanism. So if you're kind of confused about that, that's the basic explanation behind it, and, and that'll happen every single time. Uh, so if you guys remember 2008, 2009, 
there was another financial, there, sorry, this is an exogenous event. So this is not a financial crisis. Well, hopefully it doesn't turn into one. But 2008, 2009 was a financial crisis. Mm -hmm. That lasted about, uh, you know, two years or so. So the stock market stayed down for a while because even when it's looking forward, it didn't, it saw grim prospects. Also, the amount of stimulus back then was nowhere near enough to cover all of the downfall that was occurring from, from all that CEOs. That, well, they, they, and they, they weren't paying the common person to stay home. They were not paying the common person to stay home. And now they're paying the common person to stay home. It's, it's, yeah. it's been a lot of stimulus that's been pumped in. Uh, I hope, you know, there's a couple of things that we have to watch out for. Are people taking advantage of this? I'm sure there's lots of people who are taking advantage of it. Well, I mean, I mean, to be honest with you, I think they did that right. I think they did like, hey, you know what? Some people are going to take advantage of this. We'll find them later. I agree with you. I, I agree. Because you, you don't have the time to sort it out. You know, when, yeah. when this person, you, you don't have enough resources to say, hey, this person's doing it the right way. This person, you, you say, everyone gets it and we'll sort it out later. And I, I yeah. agree. That was the right way to do it. Yeah. Um, but it kind of it kind of has a, a double-edged sword to it, right? Because now you've got people who are reliant upon the system. Uh, you've got a tremendous amount of debt that's been created. Uh, mm -hmm. So it's, at some point in time, this is going to have to be paid back. And that's a tremendous burden for society. So are you saying they're going to raise my taxes again? Yep. Your taxes yeah. are going to get raised. But the good part is, Mark, your interest rates are going to be low for a while. Fair enough. Your taxes, okay. your taxes are definitely going up. I'll, I'll just refinance my properties. I don't, won't pay taxes on that. And then uh, we're good. I'll just buy more. Right. That's, that's one way to do it. But yeah, yeah. The, the tax rate is going to, I think, definitely go up over the years uh, because somebody has to pay this back. It's yeah. just, it's, there's no way around that. Yeah. Uh, that you just print more and more money. Yeah, for sure. Okay. Well, I mean, so we talked options, we've talked the uh, stock market. I know you're a bit of a real estate investor too. Um, why, why did, so you were a stock market, you're making good money in the stock market. Why, why did you uh, get into the real estate market? Yeah. I like your so story, by the way. Yeah, yeah. So it was the exact reason why. It's the same reason the real estate uh, people should get into the stock market uh, is because you don't want to rely upon, there's no perfect investment. You don't want to rely upon one asset category. So I was in the stock market and I was in the financial industry. I worked there. I made my living from there. So in 2008, 2009, uh, we had a huge, huge calamity. And I lost like about half my net worth on paper uh, because the stock market went down. And that was that was pretty scary for me. And I said to myself, you know, I'm never going to have one asset category ever again, because there's no perfect investment. So just after that, in 2010, I bought my first real estate property and I grew my real estate portfolio from there. And now I have a sizable real estate portfolio. Uh, but my true passion is, is, is the stock market. I do love it, but I understand the importance of having real estate in my portfolio. Although I don't enjoy it as much as I enjoy stocks. There is a you're, you're just not doing it right. Well, I, it's, it's just give me your money and then I'll. <laughs> right. Well, the thing is, it's, 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 um, one is an active investment. Real estate's an active investment. I don't care who you are. It's an active, just the, the acquisition part, the due diligence part, the refinancing part. You know, there is a management component, even if you have a portfolio manager, there right. is a management component. So there's, you have an active investment on one side and on, on, on the stock market, I don't have to talk to anyone. I don't have to, I don't have to do anything. All I have to do is look at me and my phone, right? Mark, you know that. Yeah. There's nobody to talk to. And how long does it take you to trade today? Oh, I'm, I'm 15, 20 minutes now. And, and, I, and I, I'm conscious about that because I find that when I have more time. You waste time. And, on the screen. Well, I, I waste time looking at the screen, but because I'm not doing anything, I'll be like, oh, I should make a trade. Right, right. So, so force trades. Yeah. I force trades, right? And when I'm not, like when I'm busy and I just look and I'm like, oh, there's something to do or there isn't something to do and, and away I go, right? Or I'll preset, I'll preset something and walk away and sometimes it hits, sometimes it doesn't. And, you know, I'm good. If it doesn't hit, fine. It didn't come down to what I wanted or it didn't happen the way I needed it to, right? Right. So I, I'm an advocate of having both asset categories. You should, you should have real estate in your, in your portfolio. You should, have, uh, you should have a good, thorough understanding of the stock market as well. Wow. Well, you, you, you need outside assets. I mean, that's why I got into this because when we met, I was 99.9% .9 in real estate. I was a real estate agent. I owned real estate. Right. I was lending on real estate. Like if the real estate market, something happened to it, I was screwed. Right, right. And that, that, that's, that's the same thing that happened to me in 08, 09 with the stock market. Same thing. I had everything in that one asset category. And when things went really bad, 
on paper, I lost half of my net worth. And I said, this yeah. is not going to happen to me again, right? Because anything can happen. Like I said earlier, there is no perfect investment. I don't care what, what, you, what it is. There's, real estate's not the perfect investment. The stock market's not the perfect investment. There is no perfect investment. Gold, whatever you want to call it, bonds. You need to have multiple asset categories and a thorough understanding of these multiple asset categories in order to truly get to where you want to get to. Yeah, you know what the perfect investment is? What is it? The good quality property or stock that you bought 50 years ago and you held for 50 years and now you look like a genius, right? Right. The only thing is you got to have the 50 years ahead of you to do that, right? So we're behind that's you. Yeah, it. That's it. That's, that's, I agree with that, Mark. There is a, yeah. there is a, a lot of truth in that. Uh, so yeah, there's no perfect investment out there, guys. There's just, uh, but you need to understand both. Another thing I'll say about the difference between the stock market and real estate market is this. The real estate market is really good for capital appreciation, but not as good for cash flow because you know, you kind of refinance. I agree. Yep. Right. So you refinance every so often. And, and obviously something like when coronavirus hits, you're going to actually do, you're going to get in a negative cash flow, right? Because that's just, you know, it's just the nature of, of the market right now. Now the real, uh, the stock market, excuse me, the way we trade options, that is excellent for cash flow and not so good for capital appreciation. So when you combine the two together, you get not only good, cash flow coming in, which is how you enjoy your life day to day, but you also get really good wealth creation, which will allow you to have a comfortable retirement down the road and create uh, assets that your family can inherit one day. For so sure. That's why, that's why I believe in having both. I think they're, they're, they're both valuable to have. And, and the knowledge, uh, you, you got to get educated on both. It's not, a, you know, it's not a simple matter of, hey, I'll just buy something and see what happens. That's not how it works. For sure. For sure. All right. Well, so we talked real estate, we talked stocks, options. You got your course coming up the 27th, 28th of June, nine and a half hours of pure stock market fun. Um, you know what? We'll throw a link in the description below. Uh, we'll throw up your, um, your social media, Theta Trading, up here as well. Um, and I was, gonna, I was gonna say if anyone wants to have a free one hour webinar in terms of what I was talking about oh, the option go, yeah. market, right? Why, why Mark has got so excited about it. We have free one hour webinars twice a week where we go over the strategy of why it works and, and what exactly it is because you know I can tell it to you conceptually right now, but it's tough, it's difficult to understand at first. You know, like the same way, Mark, when I first told you about it, it's kind of difficult. You're like, I, I don't get this. How does that make sense? Why would I yeah. get paid to do something that I would do anyways, right? Uh, so if you want to go to, uh, 30 minute stock trader.com forward slash theta trading, which is T H E T A theta trading. Uh, you can, you can sign up for the free one hour webinar mark. If you wouldn't mind throwing that link in there. So people we'll throw with a, we'll throw the link in. We'll put it right on the screen across it. So people can read it and we'll put the link in the description below. Yeah, that'd be great. So you guys can have a listen to the one hour webinar and see if it's, if it's something that, uh, that makes sense for you. I'm, I'm, I'm certain it does. Uh, as it has for myself and for Mark over the years. So thank yeah, you. and if you guys, uh, I mean, I know tons of people have gone through the seminar and who are now trading and making good money from it. So if you guys want to reach out to any of those people, happy to put you in touch, and you guys can you guys can chat and and find out their um, opinions on the courses. Perfect. All right. Well, thanks everybody for tuning in. If you made it this far, you you got to subscribe. Because you got to see, want to see Mark do Russian dancing. All right, guys. We'll see you in the next one. Have a great day. Thanks, Mark. Thanks, Omar.